Hi Redeem my kids, I hope you're all doing really well. Welcome to week four of our series, This Changes Everything. In week one, we were introduced to Saul. Now if you remember, he was going around killing Christians, but then he met Jesus on the road to Damascus and began to follow him. In week two, we followed Paul, that's Saul's new name, and Barnabas, as they told the Gentile people all about Jesus and salvation. Paul was stoned and he was left for dead, but the disciples turned up and Paul got up and continued on his journey. In week three, we focused on the change that happens inside of us when we commit our lives to Jesus and follow him. All of this leads us up to today, week four, the grand finale, the final lap. So let's talk about what it takes to live a life for Jesus that sets an example to others. But first, let's start with a game. So how did you do? Did you get them all right? Were there any surprises in there? I always thought chickens were faster than pigs, so that was a bit of a surprise for me. Right, let's spend some time now worshipping.
they come around All of his blessings, they come on down on me So one, two, three I'll sing and dance and jump around Cause my God knows my heart I'll laugh and run and praise him loud Cause my God knows my heart He knows my heart He knows my heart compares our Christian life to a race. Paul knew the importance of finishing strong in a race and in life. So we're going to take a look at what kind of an impact Paul had as he finished his race. Let's take a look at our answer for the day and remember this is the answer to the question what did you learn in Redeemer Kids today? Jesus helps me finish strong. Now we'll watch a video recapping the story of Paul's life. I'm Dan. I'm Andrew. And we're here to tell you a Bible story. That's right. This is the story of a guy named Paul. Well, actually, it starts with a guy named Saul. Oh, so there's a different guy? No, same guy. So two guys, two names. No, one guy, two names. Wait, what? I'm super confused. My head hurts. Uh, mm. Here, let me show you what I mean. A long time ago, there lived a man named Saul. Hey, he looks nice. What's up, Saul? Want to hang out some time? Catch a movie? Grill some burgs? Uh, I don't think you want to do that. Saul wasn't really a good guy. What, did he like litter, double park all the time? Uh, no. You see, Saul didn't believe in Jesus, and he hated anyone that did. He traveled around searching for anyone that followed Jesus, and if he found anyone, he'd throw them in jail. Wowza, that's pretty rough. Looks like we're not hanging out anytime soon, Saul. No birds for you, amigo. But one day, something amazing happened. Jesus himself appeared to Saul. Whoa, like the Jesus? Yeah, man. Saul was traveling down the road when all of a sudden, a blinding light filled the sky and knocked Saul to the ground. Jesus called out to Saul and said, Saul, why are you hurting the people that follow me? Oh man, I bet Saul was totally wigging out. Time to pay the bill, homie. Zabam! You just got straight up judged, son. Uh, no, that's not what happened at all. Saul was so affected by Jesus showing up and talking to him that he did a total 180. 
He got born again and he started following Jesus. Hey, that's awesome. And since he was a totally different person now, the first thing he did was change his name. He used to be Saul, but his new name was Paul. Ah, oh, so that's why there's two names in the story. Gotcha. Okay, that's really cool and all, but is that the whole story? I mean, it just seems kind of short. No way. Paul's story is just getting started. After he got saved, he had a new mission. He would travel around preaching the good news about Jesus, healing people, starting churches, and getting people saved. Yeah, way to go, Paul! And after a while, he set a goal. There was one person in particular that Paul really wanted to share Jesus with. Someone that can make a huge impact if they were born again. Batman. Uh, what? Yeah, dude, we gotta get that guy saved. Think how awesome that would be. Hey, it's time to take up the offering. Boom, billion dollars. Hey, I need to ride to church. Boom, Batmobile. Okay, no, it wasn't Batman. Paul's goal was to share the good news with Caesar, the leader of Rome and the most powerful man in the whole world. Whoa, that's cool. But as he traveled around, he kind of ran into some problems. Hmm, you mean like he got stuck in traffic a bunch? Yeah, that construction will get you. It's brutal. Uh, not really. One day, Paul was preaching in a city, when all of a sudden, an angry mob grabbed him, dragged him out of the city, and threw him in the dirt. Whoa, why did they do that? Well, even though Paul had totally changed, some other people still didn't want Jesus to be talked about. But that didn't stop Paul. He dusted himself off and he headed to the next city. What happened there? He started preaching, but again, some people wanted to shut him up. This time they grabbed him, beat him up, and threw him out of the city. Again? Man, what did he do after that? He picked himself up and he kept on going. He traveled all around the countryside telling people about Jesus, and he didn't let anything stop him. And eventually everything started going smooth, right? Uh, not so much. People kept trying to stop Paul, but they couldn't. He just wouldn't quit. These people hated him so much that one time they waited for him by the gates of a city so they could catch him and kill him. Good grief! What happened? Some friends of his helped him escape by luring him down the city walls in a basket. Whew! That was a close call. But in the next city, he wasn't so lucky. He was captured, beaten, and thrown into prison. Wait, so he got thrown into jail for talking about Jesus? Oh, the irony. Well, I guess that's the end of the line, Paul. Not so fast. What are you talking about? He's in jail, dude. Game over, man. Game over. Even in prison, Paul still shared the good news. He sang songs and praised God in his cell. He wasn't going to let anything stop him. And then that night, while he was praising God, something amazing happened. He was up for parole. Uh, no. A huge earthquake shook the entire prison. His chains broke and the doors rattled off their hinges. He was free! Oh, awesome. So what happened after that? He picked up right where he left off and he headed off to the next city. You gotta be kidding me. Okay, so obviously he's been through a lot, but surely things evened out after this. No more bad stuff, right? Wrong. He was sailing across the sea when one day, a huge storm picked up. For days, the wind and waves pounded the boat until it crashed into a reef and started to sink. Paul jumped into the water and swam for the shore. Whew, another close call. Just glad he made it to shore, glad he's finally safe. Then he got bit by a snake. What? Come on, man, are you serious? While he was building a fire, a deadly viper latched onto his hand and it wouldn't let go. Oh boy, well, it's been a good run, but Looks like it's the end for Paul. I don't think so. Paul just shook the snake into the fire and he wasn't hurt at all. Unbelievable. Okay, I gotta know, how did he keep going when everything in the world was constantly against him? Well, Paul knew that the power of God in him was way stronger than any of the bad stuff that came his way. With God on his side, he was unstoppable. Man, Paul is like a real-life superhero. It's a bird, it's a plane, it's Super Paul! You got that straight. And eventually, Paul accomplished his mission. He made it to Rome and was able to share Jesus with Caesar, the most powerful man in the world. Mission accomplished. Man, Paul sounds like the coolest guy. Looks like we're back on for burgers in a movie, right, Paul? Big Paul! Pale, the Paulster, Paularino. Uh, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just trying out some nicknames for when Paul and I are best friends. Uh, you know that Paul lived like 2,000 years ago, right? <laughs> yes, of course I know that. I'm just going to use my time machine. Okay, for the last time, you cannot use your time machine. Oh, yeah? Try and stop me. All right, that's the story of Paul, the end. 
Oh man, really got me good there. Paul's missionary journeys led him on some crazy adventures. Paul got to experience what it looked like to completely trust in God and live a life completely for him. Once his life was changed on that day on the road to Damascus, Paul never looked back. He was a new man with a new name and everything. But that didn't mean that things were easy for Paul. Paul went through some horrible, painful and exhausting times. During his journeys, Paul would write to the churches he had started or visited, or ones that he hadn't visited yet. Through his letters and the incredible words that he wrote, we learn all about Paul's journeys. We see the troubles that he had and the triumphs that he had. Doing God's work wasn't always easy. In fact, it was very difficult for him at that time. But Paul didn't regret it. In 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10, Paul said, For Christ's sake I delight in weaknesses, in insults, in hardships, in persecutions, in difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Did you know that some of the most popular verses in the Bible were written by Paul? In fact, he wrote more books of the Bible than anybody else. Paul wanted to tell as many people as he could about Jesus in whatever time he had on this earth. What an, exa an example he is to us, an amazing example of a life lived for God. Jesus forever changed Paul's life and he wanted the world to know it. Paul knew that he had heaven waiting for him once his time on earth was done. He had committed his life to Jesus and he knew that when he died, he would be with Jesus forever in heaven with his Saviour and Lord. Paul finished his life strong and I hope and pray that we can all finish our lives strong like Paul. Now let's see how much you've learned over the last four weeks. I hope you're ready because now we're going to have a quiz. So how did you do with the quiz? 10 out of 10? 8 out of 10? 6 out of 10? Still not too bad. I hope you've enjoyed this series. This changes everything. Um, this is the last week of this series and next week we'll be starting a brand new series. So see you then.